I've encountered another survivor, in a sense. Atop a hill, far away from the village, was a farm. In most cases, corpses seem to have followed the smells and sounds of other humans. But they weren't able to track some of them, which may explain who I found. A donkey locked in a stall in a pen. His owner's left, which likely drew away corpses. The donkey has been stuck in here for quite a while. A well that is now flooded waters him, but he's been running out of hay and the pen is full of feces. Another rotting corpse is next to him that appears to be equid like the still standing donkey. He's been living off the leftover straw of two animals, but he hasn't been able to run beyond the fences. Any fence is no match for a sturdy grella, though. I broke a large post out and then, by his hair, led him away. The donkey didn't understand for a while. It hadn't been free in a few months. It hadn't occurred to me that asses could be shocked with whole as humans had. My brother was like that in his last week, as though his brain had seen one too many whores and dried out. I could have doomed it to die a painful death of being ripped apart, but I suppose I don't care. Better die like a wolf on the run than a dog in a cage. I leave you as Asher, 17 now. God watch over me and this donkey, and may she forgive for what I did next. I return to the farmhouse, driven by curiosity and hunger. Low on supplies, the nights will grow longer and longer, and I will need more and more to survive. I entered this house and again was treated with a whores, worse than the other one, and a painting. A messy scrawl of a massive watching eye, seven veins splitting into eight arms, each with a hand reaching for the spiral at the core of it. How many people knew about this cataclysm before it happened? Worshipping this chaos like a god. Or is this a symptom of the Norgoth plague as well? At this point, I fear I may have to stop breaking into more houses just to satiate my ignorance. I found something else in the house. A pre-colonization lantern. It still works. They're very simple for those who aren't native. The translucent stones placed in top of a lead box to protect the user. The top is sealed shut. A lever on the top will open the front, allowing the crystals inside to shine. They last forever. Or possibly a mere thousand years, but the oldest ones known still shine today, but the construction was banned after it learned the stones inside caused its growths and sicknesses. Mages and alchemists still use them. It's useful for them to have access to flameless lights, and they wouldn't listen to the king if he asked them to stop drinking poison for breakfast. I've never known the king to be right about anything, but staring into this light makes my teeth ache. Careful examination reveals the largest gem is cracked in half twice leaving three large pieces, each smaller than last. Fresher, brighter colors can be seen in the cracks. Maybe it's rusting on the outside. Many smaller gems lived at the bottom of the lantern. Some are nearly powder, but some are larger than a coin. It's a sturdy thing. I only hope no night's flake find its way in. Darkness may have its calms, but light holds sanity. With the lantern to guide my way, I left the house and went into the night. <laughs>